Hello everyone, it's Sylvia from Fellow Tarot. Welcome to my channel. So as promised, today I'm going to start a new series where I give out free readings to subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber, just click that button. It really means a lot to me. By the way, I'm having constant camera problems today, so it will be lots of fun. <laughs> Hopefully it will go through smoothly, but I cannot guarantee that. But let's have a look. So just to explain, um, last week I uh, sent out a message in the community tab saying that um, I wanted to start this new series where I um, was inviting my subscriber to send me an email with one question, one very simple question, uh, and I will do a reading um, on that simple question. It's going to be a three card poll, so very simple, very short. Um, and it's been lots of fun because this way I received a lot of requests already. Unfortunately, today I can only fit four because of time reasons. Uh, but I will make sure to uh, give readings to all of the people that reached out to me. So it will be a recurring thing. Every Wednesday, um, you will uh, see, you will receive a message from me in which I will tell you when your reading will be aired, will be posted. Um, as promised as well, I'm going to make sure 100% that I will not reveal any detail, any personal detail of your story, of your name, your location, anything related to you, because your privacy is the most important thing for me. Obviously, these videos are public, so they can be seen by everyone, but there is no way that anyone can identify you. Um, some of you have said that they don't actually mind for me to share a few details um, about yourselves, but I will still make it a general rule uh, not to reveal any detail other than the question you actually sent me uh, for the reading. So just to repeat, this is exclusively for subscribers, although these videos will be public. So if you're not a subscriber and you're watching this video, if you want me to do a reading for you, please subscribe to my channel and contact me via email. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So the very first person to send me an email with a question um, asked me, will I have success with my writing? Um, now, what I generally do when I respond to your messages, I ask you if you have a specific request for me to use a deck, one deck or another. Um, I only had one person out of four, the four readings that I'll do today, that requested a specific deck. Uh, we had a bit of a conversation actually, and we decided together to go ahead with that specific deck. But generally speaking, um, what I really do appreciate is, well, I appreciate both in the sense that if someone has a very particular bond with the deck that I have, that it's in my collection, I'm very happy to use that one. But I'm also happy for someone to tell me to use my own intuition. Now, when I heard that this person uh, wants to know about their uh, career, their success in a writing career, I smiled because I'm a writer myself and uh, I kind of know the struggle. I really know the struggle. <laughs> and um, I feel that um, I wanted to use this deck. It's the Poet Tarot. Now, if you don't you know this deck, it's by Tricia Lee Schufeld. I think it's been published by, yeah, by Red Feather. It's a very, very beautiful deck. I personally like it very much. This is a beautiful deck for this type of readings. I've actually used it for myself a few times whenever I felt like I had a bit of a writer's block. And I'm not saying that this person has a writer's block, absolutely. I actually do not know that. Um, but um, it's not just helpful um, to restart let's say the creative process it's also very helpful to give us an indication on what we can expect from the creations that we are putting out there so let's not forget that someone who's writing generally speaking they are writing to be read so they're writing to be published and in that case it's like burying yourself naked in front of strangers so you are putting your baby out there for all the world to see and to judge. Um, and I think that whenever I look at this deck, I'm reminded of Edgar Allan Poe, who's one of my favorite um, writers. And whether you liked his works or not, there is a certain mastery of skills at play. 
um, that can be recognized and appreciated. But let's have a look. So um, as promised is a three uh, card pool. So let's move the candles. Okay, so okay, so let's have a look. Let me see because I want to zoom in because I can I want to see the cards better. Okay, so these are the three cards. Now let's have a look. Normally, what I identify as the position on the three card pool. I see the center card as the situation. On the left of the situation, we can see either the past or the events that brought the situation into being, or even something that hinders the present situation. And it depends on the reading, it depends on um, what the cards uh, tell me. As a consequence of that, then I would change my interpretation of the card on the right. So if I interpret this as the present situation, this as the past or the events that led to this present, this will be obviously the future. Now, um, if this card is read as obstacles, something that hinders the present, then this card will be read as something that can help escape that kind of situation. It depends on this central card. Now, in this in the, let's say in this particular reading to me i think it's a bit of a mix of those um positions in the sense that we've got the ten of candles now in this particular deck the candles uh, the suit of candles is the suit of fires this is the wands and the ten of candles now this is a card that it's very powerful in this reading by the way we also notice that we have two major arcanas in a three cards pool uh, which is very significant so this reading is very um a very strong it's got it it's channeling very strong energies it means that this is a, a let's say not a nisi gritty stuff kind of reading this is motivations energies and outcomes okay so in the present situation i see a lot of struggle this struggle is due to probably the fact that you've taken on a lot on yourself this is a heavy burden you're carrying i have the impression that in specific because your question is about having success will i have success with my writing i feel like you've put on a lot of meaning a very strong meaning um to this to your writing career and you've come to a point in which you're exhausted because you invested so much of yourself and the candle, the suit of wands tells me that more than an investment in money, it's actually an investment in spiritual energy and also in, in body energy. Um, it feels like you're, you find yourself in a very depleted kind of position. And if I look at the cards on the sides, I feel like the strength card is something that definitely both hinders, but also represents what your past is and what actually led to this present situation. I think there was a lot of uh, uh, back and forth. I think there has been a lot of doubt. I think there has been a lot of um, uh, second guessing. Um, it implies a lot of trust and a lot of energy in advance. Does that make sense? So you need to spend a lot of your energy in order to overcome these obstacles that you probably did not even have or not had enough. And because of that, you actually find yourself exhausted right now. 
So if we see this natural progression, what I see is that what you need to do in order to have a good outcome is to probably abandon the sense of wanting to do things on your own and follow some teacher and mentor a, um, someone who can guide you, someone, and not necessarily someone uh, in the writing world. Um, I think that the Hierophant definitely represent uh, the figure of someone who can give you back that kind of confidence that feels like it's been lost by the sheer exhaustion of what you had to do in order to arrive where, where, where you are right now. So I don't necessarily see any kind of obstacle in the future but i do see an invitation a very strong invitation to um kind of retrench on what you're doing right now and if you want to succeed reach out to someone that can give you a hand uh, what i mean is exactly this so retrace your step back just a little bit find what your model of writing and as a writer so not just the writing as, as in the output the production but also the personality of the person that has been succeeding in writing so what do you like the most about these people gather some knowledge about their life um, in my case I always refer back to Stephen King because he's been very prolific but also because he wrote a very very entertaining um, let's say biography not really a biography but he talks about the art of writing and why he started writing and how they did that and that was actually an eye-opener for me because it really gave me um, an idea on how to structure my life I around writing. So that's what this card is asking you to do. So this is what the cards are telling me for this particular reading. And uh, I hope this resonates with you. If it does, or even if it doesn't, um, please send me an email back and let me know what you think. Or if you have any question, I'm here. So that's not, not a problem at all. Um, Thank you so much for reaching out to me. I wish you a wonderful future in your writing career. So the second person that contacted me um, asked me, am I on the right path? What do I need to focus on? And I feel like I really wanted to use this deck, the Forager's Daughter Tarot. So this deck is very earthy. It's got a very earthy energy. Um, it's a very nature related deck, very animal uh, related deck just felt like the right deck to use for this person and for this particular question and uh, let's see how it goes so as always I'm just gonna shuffle okay let me zoom out because otherwise you can see the cards As you can see, this deck is just a joy to fan out. Um, it's, um, I really do notice these kind of things when I use a deck. But let's have a look at the cards. Okay, let's do me. Okay, so I don't know if you've been watching the first reading that I've given out, but uh, I was mentioning that depending on the reading, generally speaking, this card in the center for me represents the situation, the present situation. This card on the left could be the obstacles that led to the present situation or, you know, where you're coming from. Um, it can also be something that hinders the present situation or the desired outcome. And depending on what this card feels like, this card will definitely be either the future, the outcome, what to expect, or something that, they may, that may instead help the present situation. So what I see 
right now what i feel like reading is that we've got the king of cups suit of cups is the suit of the emotion the suit of the feelings and the king is obviously the combination of the whole suit um, in specific, when I refer back to the court cards, where the queen is achieving the um, utmost result in the suit of the emotions on an introspective level, the king is the one that achieves that kind of power on, on an outward um, direction. So in the community, the king is always looking at the community. It feels to me like you yourself may be in a position in which um, you have achieved that kind of mastery of your feelings, of your emotions. Um, you're definitely someone who um, has had a lot of experience. You don't come to this position, not certainly not to the position of, of a king, um, as a beginner what does feel like that hinders a bit this position though is the two of swords which is on the left now the two of swords is a kind of being stuck and this to me um, it feels like you're supposed to be in this position but you're not because you're kind of stuck between you know a rock and a hard place the two of swords is the kind of card where you find yourself in a very difficult situation it's not the two of pentacles in which you're juggling stuff around and it's kind of whimsical this is a heavy card in the sense that it reflects a lot on the suit of the mind because the swords is the suit of the mind so the way in which the suit of the mind hinders the suit of the heart is also because it's a completely different planet so we're talking about water as an energy here and air for it as an energy here there needs to be a very strong balance of these two elements in a person for these two elements to coexist so what this feels to me is like what you want to achieve is this so you want to become um, you know um, to have the kind of recognition that a king has in the sense that you want to also be recognized in your community for it feels to me like you're a very good person and i'm just brainstorming about imagine if you're doing charity work for example or you might be someone whose job is to help others um probably more related not necessarily a doctor for example but a nurse you know what i mean so in the in the sense that this help towards the community towards the others even strangers um this is the peculiarity of the king that it doesn't have to be someone close to you for you to actually help them um it feels like it's been really hindered by the constant thoughts that you might have in your mind um it feels like you you're going back and forth um you, it not necessarily because you're not convinced but because there's a lot of things that come to your attention that you're really feeling distracted and you're kind of feeling stuck and you want to achieve this but you cannot because of this don't forget though that the source is uh, the suit of the mind so um these are not physical impediments these are literally anxieties um you know worrying thoughts they represent some obstacle to the fulfillment of your um your position or what you want to become now if we read this this way i see a definitely a very positive card um in the immediate future a, the chariot is a very great card in this particular specific reading because where we see hesitation where we see hindering and obstacles onto achieving um, what you want from yourself and your career your path you're talking about a path what do i need to focus on you need to focus on the chariot the chariot is overcoming obstacles i feel like you're asking um, your question uh, is where do I need to focus is because you have too many things you're paying attention to that too many things that worry you too many things on the table too many problems issues um, always re related to the suit of the mind and you need to leave some of these behind so the chariot implies movement as well so the chariot is the card of overcoming obstacle, but it's also the card that tells you that if this doesn't serve, you just leave it behind and move on.
okay because this is the direction the cards are encouraging you to take move on um and i strongly believe that this is extremely positive for you because don't forget that 2023 is the year of the chariot on top of everything so you will have a lot of support um, if you accept that you have to leave these worries behind or at least some of them try and make a choice on uh, what actually hinders you and leave that behind don't take that with you because it really feels like this is stopping this from happening okay so um what you need to focus on leave these behind don't wake up at 3 a.m anymore i know it's easier said than done um i know that but maybe take up a routine um i don't know i don't know your interest what you like to do or you know anything like that but um this card, the reason why i felt like using this deck probably means that you need to reconnect to nature somehow i don't know if you have a pet for example uh but go outside go outside use the chariot go move move um go outside reconnect with nature do something that silences the mind because i do have the feeling that this card is really dragging you down okay so i wish you plenty of success and i really want you to feel like you can leave some of this stuff behind so the third request uh, comes from someone who asks uh, what should i be mindful of going forward and uh, I felt like using this deck. This is by far one of my favorite decks. It's the Savvy Soul Tarot by Julie Wildish. Um, I feel that um, this deck has a lot to say um, because, you know, there's so much diversity in this deck. There is so, um, and, and it's a very well-balanced deck. Um, so I don't know, maybe because of this question being um, like a, a general question, I felt like this deck would have been the best one to use in this case. So as always, I'm just going to shuffle. Okay, let's zoom out a bit. By the way, again, apologies about the noises in the background <laughs> today. So I live close to the ocean and we have a, um, a shark spotting system by helicopter. And um, so you can probably hear the helicopter in the background because they're probably sighting a shark. I'm actually going to go um, to the beach and have a look later. Okay, so um, let's have a look. The question is, what should I be mindful of going forward? So again, just to summarize the way I read the three cards, generally speaking, I look at the center card and this can represent either the present or the situation. And depending on how I feel the other interaction with the other cards, this one on the left can be whether it's something that hinders obstacles, that hinders the, the present situation from uh, realizing its full potential. Or it could be the it could be representing the past, the reason why we got to this situation, and depending on how I read this card, then I will read this card um, as a future or the outcome or um, something that can help fulfill the potential of the present situation. Now, in the present, I actually see a it's it's a very funny card to me the um, the two of pentacles. The two of pentacles to me is, yes, you're kind of stuck right now in the sense that you need to, uh, you, you're you not entirely sure um, what to do, um, but it's a, a good situation to be in. It's not the two of swords that we've seen before. You're not stuck um, because of anxiety. Um, it looks like you're attempting a lot of things, so you're actually standing on a um, on a board. This is a stand-up paddle board, by the way. I can recognize that because it's got uh, the uh, the grip here. But you're also trying to balance on top of your head two coins, one on top of the other. So it's a very 
it looks like it's a very precarious situation it's a very temporary situation but it's also a very whimsical one it's a funny one if you're stuck at the moment um it's because you have to take a decision between a few things but none of them is actually bad um so this feels to me like you're probably um, at the young stage, not necessarily young age, but a young stage of your life in which you may have been reinventing yourself. Therefore, you're at an earlier stage of your career, for example, um, or you are definitely a young person and you're kind of looking around and you're basking in all the possibilities that um, present themselves to you. And you just need to, you, you just want to know where to focus on. You just need to know, you want to know if there's something you'll be, you need to be mindful of. Um, or you just started something, but it still feels like you're really juggling your way through that. You're really, really trying to find your balance. You're trying to find your center. You're trying to ground yourself because for now, it feels like you're standing on a paddle board and, and you know, trying to juggle stuff on top of your head, etc. So um, what this card, um, what I really like about this card is that at the bottom, there's always a bit of a sentence that is always to me spot on for the card. And this one says stability comes from knowing your capabilities. So if you feel this way right now, just retrench back one second, maybe go back to an ace of uh, pentacles to determine what your capabilities are, what your skills are, and then, you know, invest on them. Because what we also see here that you have a massive support. This is definitely not a card that would hinder the present situation. You come from a, um, a very supportive environment and an environment that has been nurturing you, has been nurturing your possibilities, your skills, your, um, you know, what you like to do in life. So you have a lot of supporters. You come from with, with um, this magnificent uh, entourage. Um, and the way it makes you feel right now, you probably also feel a little bit of pressure in the sense that you have so much support, you are so lucky to have all this, that right now it feels like you need to perform, you need to have this kind of, you need to sort out all of these kind of things that you're trying to juggle all at once because it feels like you don't want to let anyone down because they gave you so much. Um, but... Um, when I read, I read these three cards sequentially, I also feel how much life there is here, how much strong sense of um, beginning something with the page of wands. And it's a wonderful card because it tells, it, it talks about the enthusiasm of doing something and, uh, you know, the joy that you can find in all the little things um, the joy of the electricity of life. It, it talks about the electricity, even in the sentence below, it says enthusiasm is the electricity of life. You, you definitely have to um, take advantage of this. Now, it, because your specific question was, um, what should I be mindful of going forward? It gives me the impression that you come from a lot of support. You feel in a position in which you're probably... Uh, you, you, you've sensed that kind of pressure of performing, um, which is even more confirmed by the fact that we have the page of wands. Now, the page of wands, the, the, one, the suit of wands is definitely the suit of performers, especially when you look at the court cards. The performance uh, by excellence is the queen of wands. Um, but the page of wands is at that stage. So it feels like you're going down that road. And you feel the energy of the situation. You, if you were asking me in specific what you need to be mindful of, to be honest with you, I would definitely go back to this card rather than this one. Um, I would definitely tell you that it, this is a, a kind of a whimsical situation to find yourself in. But don't um, be grounded. Try and get grounded. Try and find that balance. Try and find that equilibrium. Because when you fall, it's very difficult to go back to this, okay? So it, it, what you're doing is practically impossible. It's physically an impossibility. Um, you're juggling on too much. So go back to the Ace of Pentacles and really reflect on your capabilities, your skills, well, also what you like to do. 
um, and be aware of the fact that right now you're probably trying too many things and there cannot you you may have the risk so you may be you may have to be mindful of the risk of falling and uh, that's something that it is a very clear possibility if you keep on doing what you're doing now in this situation um, you may you know you may tumble down because this is not a very easy position to be in and that's that's my recommendation so um, get back to the ace of pentacles identify your own skills invest on them focus on them but never forget to enjoy the electricity of it all the the life that goes through all of this this is such a good reading by the way it's such a really powerful energy so i wish you all the success and the last reading for today is for this person who's asking me, am I with the right person? Now, after a bit of, a bit of back and forth uh, by email, we decided together to use this deck. Um, I'm not going to share the reason behind this, um, but um, I, I really have this feeling that this deck and the, and the person asking for the, uh, the reading knew about this deck already. And, and just said, absolutely, um, I really feel like it's the right deck to use for this specific reading. So it's the Dark Days Tarot. And let's see. Okay, so I'm going to shuffle. What have we got here? So we've got Ace of Pentacles, the Queen of Salt, and Justice. So the question specifically is, am I with the right person? Let's have a look before I answer this question. Let's have a look at what the cards want to tell you. Just to repeat, this is the present situation. This is what hinders the present situation. This is what helps or this is the past and this is the future. What I feel like for what you told me, because we did have a bit of an exchange of emails with this person, I do recognize what you were talking about. This, this to me feels like a past kind of card or position because it feels like uh, there's this something new, there's something, um, a new project, something that has been created, something has just been born, like a relationship. However, we do see that in the suit of the earth rather than the suit of, uh, of water. And therefore, it seems to be pointing to me more at, uh, to a practical aspect of your relationship. Um, so it, it looks as if you're, um, you met this person, um, it ticked all the right boxes and, um, and you know, and, and you had, I'm not saying you didn't have feelings for him, absolutely not. What I mean is that you let yourself uh, be swept by this relationship because it, it was a safe relationship for you at that moment to have. Ace of Pentacles is absolutely a great card to have in your past. And the fact that this has uh, brought by a relationship, it is definitely a really good um, starting point. Um, what I do see now is that the Queen of Swords, whether this, this is referring to you as an archetype or not, well, what I understand in our exchange of emails, you're someone who does not take any bullshit. Um, and uh, you can actually smell bullshit from a mile away. 
I mean that in, in a very uh, good way. Um, you have clarity, okay? I really love the depiction of the Queen of Swords in this deck in specific because these eyes can see everything. It's the all-seeing eyes, it's realizing everything that is under the sun with the utmost, the, the strongest and most clear light possible, okay? So it feels like you're actually coming to me and asking me if you are with the right person. That's already a doubt. Um, to me, it means that if you were asking for that specific question, it's because you yourself are doubting that. Perhaps you are aware of something. Perhaps you have seen something that doesn't necessarily click with you. Um, it's a relationship that has been born in a very good environment. Um, but perhaps with time, um, now you have a more clear vision of what it has become. And if we look at this card, the Justice card, so the Justice card is really channeling a very strong, powerful energy because it's a major. And uh, in this case, when we have the combination of the Queen of Swords and the Justice card, we have a lot of air, so the element of air, which is a very strong element, it's a very powerful element. It feels to me like you're actually kind of, um, you've already decided. I'm sorry if this doesn't resonate with you, but this is what the cards are telling me. You are putting everything in a balance. You're deciding whether something that you have seen, that you have realized about this um, relationship, is the right thing for you or not. It feels like you have a strong sense that you're not. The Justice card is a balanced card, but to me, in this position, it feels like it's actually confirming what you already know. And don't forget that the Justice card, in many, many cases, also brings the awareness of consequences. Okay, Be aware of the consequences. So you're asking me if you are with the right person. I'm telling you that you already know the answer. And I'm also telling you that be aware of the consequences on your own energy for what you have seen has already given you an idea, has already, um, I think, I feel like you already have made up your mind about something about this person that probably is not the person you want to be with because of something that you have realized. And this is a confirmation, but it's also a caveat, it's also a, a warning because it's telling you beware of the consequences because if you stay in a relationship that is not the right, the right relationship for you there will be depletion of energy there will be a lot that you will lose uh, because of this just send me an email and what i'll do because i feel like there's a lot of stuff that needs to be unpacked here uh, that cannot be necessarily unpacked <laughs> with the three cards pool so if you want I'm not forcing you, of course, but if you want, um, I can do a private consultation for you because there's, there's a lot that needs to be discussed here, in, in particular related to these two cards together. And I don't want to go too much into details in a public reading such as this one, even though, of course, I'm not giving you any indication of who, who you might possibly be. But in here, there's a lot to be talked about. Um, so thank you so much everyone for watching this video till the end. As I said at the beginning, this is a new series that I'm starting on my channel and it's basically I'm giving out free readings to my subscribers um, every week. In the middle of the week I will be posting videos. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing because this is one of the advantages, not just the great content because I'm showing uh, beautiful pretty decks but I'm also showing you um, how to use specific decks in specific spreads to overcome, for example, some uh, human emotions like grief and trauma. And I'm also uh, giving out free readings. What more do you want? So thank you so much. Have a great day.